Okay, so this video is basically a crash course of everything you need to know to expose for video if you're a beginner. Okay, so jumping straight into it, photographers and videographers use something called the exposure triangle to manipulate how much light is coming into their image. They do this by using three fundamental settings, your aperture, ISO, and shutter speed. If you manipulate one of the settings of the exposure triangle, you'll have to use one of the other two to compensate for that change. These settings are intertwined and build off of each other. Raise the ISO, you'll have to raise the shutter speed. If you open your aperture, you'll have to lower your ISO. Concepts like these are really important to understand when getting into filmmaking and we're going to break it down into its specifics right now. First up is aperture. Aperture deals entirely with your lens. It refers to the size of this ring in your lens. The wider the diameter, the more light is going to be let in. The smaller the diameter, the less light will be let in. This is measured in what's called an f-stop. So a large f-stop of 22 or f-22 is going to let in the least amount of light. And a small f-stop of 1.8 or f1.8 is going to let in the most amount of light. And when it comes to aperture, this is kind of backwards. The lower the number, the wider your diameter is going to be. And the higher the number, the smaller the diameter of that ring is going to be. So remember, if you're trying to get a brighter image using aperture, you're gonna to wanna to bring that f-stop number down. Also, when it comes to video, your aperture will affect more than just the exposure of your image. It'll affect your depth of field. Your depth of field is basically how blurry the background of your image is compared to the subject in the foreground. If you have a small number like 1.8, the background is going to be really blurry. You're going to get what's called bokeh. If your f-stop number is higher, like f22, the subject in your foreground won't stand out as much from your background. Just know that your aperture will change more than just your exposure. Moving on to the second part of the triangle, we have what's called ISO. Basically, ISO is a measure of how sensitive your camera's sensor is to light. If you set your ISO to a higher number, it's going to be more sensitive to light than if you set it to a lower number. What does that mean? Well, if you're in a darker environment, you'll want to capture as much light as possible. You can do this by increasing your sensor's sensitivity to light by increasing your ISO number. So raising your ISO will brighten your image. However, when you use really high ISO values, you'll get digital noise in your image. So it's a good rule of thumb to try to stick to lower ISO values. On my Lumix S5, I personally try not to exceed an ISO value of 3200, just so I can retain as much detail in the shadows and avoid getting digital noise. Okay, and now onto the last part of the exposure triangle, your shutter speed. Shutter speed is a measure of how much time your sensor is exposed to light. And this is measured in a fraction of a second. A shutter speed of 1 over 1000 is considered fast because it's only letting light hit the sensor for 1 1000th of a second. Because light is hitting the sensor for such a small period of time, it's going to be a darker image. So basically, if you want a brighter image, you'll decrease your shutter speed. And if you want a darker image, you'll increase your shutter speed. Now, just like the other parts of the exposure triangle, shutter speed affects more than just the exposure of your image. And we'll go into depth later on about frame rates, but for the sake of this video, we'll just set that to the side. Apart from changing how bright your image is, shutter speed will affect the way your image feels. A higher shutter speed, like 1 over 3000, will make your video feel very jittery and fast. Fight scenes are commonly filmed in this style, visually showing the audience a heightened sense of awareness and intensity. A slow shutter speed, on the other hand, will give you that drunk, dreamy looking feel to your video. And again, we'll talk about this more in depth later on, but for now, if you're just getting into video, you need to start with following this one rule. 
set your shutter speed to be double your frame rate. This basic rule ensures that your video will look most natural to the eye because you don't have a high shutter speed making your image very jittery and you don't have a low shutter speed making your image look very dreamy. Okay, this is the most important part of all of this. There's an order that you need to follow when exposing your image. And ultimately, you can do it however you want. This just happens to be the way that works best for me. The very first thing to do is to set your shutter speed to be double your frame rate. Once you have that set, lock it in and don't mess with it. In the past, if I needed to change the exposure of my image, shutter speed was one of the first things I went to change. But this ultimately changes how your image feels, whether it's jittery or dreamy. And if that's what you're going for, go for it, change it. But if you're just looking to change the exposure, this is the last thing you want to change. From there, you'll sort of juggle between your ISO and aperture to get the image you're looking for. If you want to prioritize that blurry background and that bokeh, you want to drop your aperture to something like f1.2. If you're really prioritizing no digital noise, then you'll want to make sure your ISO value is as low as possible. The thing with the exposure triangle is you have to compromise. If you manipulate one of the settings, you'll have to settle with what you have with another setting. Also, as a side note, most cameras will have built in tools and graphs to help you know when your exposure is spot on. Oftentimes, your eyes can be a little misleading and what you thought was a perfectly exposed image on your LCD screen turns out to be underexposed or overexposed. So tools like an exposure meter, which tells you how bright or dark your overall image is, can be helpful. Graphs like histograms and waveform monitors can help you identify where you're overexposing in your shot. Personally, I like to use what's called zebras. Depending on how you set it up, zebras will show which part of your image is overexposed. So with that said, and now that we understand the basics of the exposure triangle, I want to do a couple real world examples and show you how I'd expose for them. All right, so for this first shot, um, I'm out here and it's snowing today. We'll be looking at this shot of a flag blowing in the wind. So I have my settings um, all different right now. My shutter speed's at 125, but because I'm filming in 30 frames per second, we're actually gonna change that to 60. All right, so now that we have our shutter speed set up, um, we can see that my f-stop is 16 and my ISO is 400. We're gonna change my display real quick. So let's say I want to bring my f-stop down to 5.6 well okay my last option then because I have to compromise for each different part of the exposure triangle is ISO however to darken the image see if I go brighter it's higher ISO it's just gonna get brighter so in order to darken it the lowest I can go is 200 but my image is still pretty bright. My exposure meter right here is saying that it's three stops overexposed. So what I could do is I could bring my aperture down to 22. And there, my exposure meter says that it's properly exposed. All right, and for this next shot, because everything is so bright right now, we're gonna do a close up to get a darker image example. So right here, I'm at my stove and we're going to be doing a shot, just a close up shot of uh, some of the knobs here. So because I'm filming in 30 frames per second, we're gonna start by setting my shutter speed to double that frame rate. So let's bring that down to 60. All right, now that we've got that, let's change our display here so we can see what we're working with. Um, this is our shutter speed our aperture, and this is our exposure meter. If I wanna bring up ISO, um, there it is right there. Okay, so let's say that I want to have my f-stop, my aperture really closed. Um, that's just kind of the style I'm going for. So I'm gonna uh, put that at 22. 
F22, and we're gonna open up my ISO because right now it's saying it's three stops underexposed. And if we look at the image, we can see that uh, the shadows on top of the stove are really underexposed and we're losing a lot of that detail. So let's jump into ISO and see what we can do to brighten that image. Okay, um, let's just say we wanted to put it there, okay? Now I'm gonna transition to what that looks like on screen right here, and you'll see that there is an incredible amount of noise on top of the stove and some of the more shadowy parts of the image. So what I wanna do is I have the shutter speed right, but I want to change the aperture and the ISO to get a cleaner looking image. So what I can do is I can bring down the ISO. Honestly, it's pretty bright in here. So I'm gonna bring it down to, let's just say 400, okay? And now I'm going to bring my aperture, I'm gonna widen it up, there you go, f2.8. And our exposure meter says that it is properly exposed. And just as a side note, you can see that the video with the really high ISO value and the corrected one both say that the exposure is properly set, even though one video looks a lot better than the other.